Portland has so many amazing breweries that it's almost overwhelming. With new spots still popping up across the city, it can be hard to keep track. Picking a pint at the pub or a six pack at the store can be an almost anxiety inducing challenge. I'm Andrew Thien and this is Beat Check with The Oregonian. Up next, a conversation with The Oregonian's beer writer and breaking news editor, Andre Minier. Minier spent the past year visiting 48 Portland-based breweries. He sought to answer that almost impossible question. What's the best brewery in Beervana right now? I've been in there three times this past year. Never a miss. You know, every beer I've had there is kind of a wow beer. We talked about his top 10 list, how he gets a sense of a brewery's offerings while being safe, and why Portland had so many legendary places closed this year. Andre, it's been a year. You have visited dozens of breweries. How are you feeling? I am feeling exhilarated, educated, uh, and lucky, and tired. A lot of things. I'm feeling a lot of things, Andrew. I bet. Um, well, thanks for taking time amid your busy schedule uh, to talk about your amazing brewery series that you did this year. It's been uh, pretty fun to read. Absolutely. It's good to be here. It's. Uh, I knew at the beginning of the year it was going to be an epic endeavor, um, and mm-hmm. I, I sort of planned out the timing of it, how frequently I would need to do things, and I pretty quickly slipped behind You know, with my other duties. Yeah, being a breaking news editor. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so it's been kind of a mad scramble the last month or two, but uh, I feel like the stories are still good, the interviews are still good, and uh, yeah, it's uh, winding down. Take us back to the beginning of the year when you pitched this idea. What were you trying to accomplish? Well, it was a couple things. One was I had been covering beer for about a year, and I felt like I could I could do big stories by talking to people, sort of issue-driven stories by finding out who I should talk to, getting a hold of them, introducing myself. But I felt like I, I wasn't really immersed in, in the Portland beer industry. I didn't know enough people. I didn't know the proper sources for everything. I also didn't know all the breweries. And so I thought the only way for me to do those things is to know everybody out there, have be able to say, hey, I've been to every brewery, I've been here, I know the guy who ran it, who started it, and I understand their story, I understand what they do. And so that was one motivation. The other motivation was just simply having a resource for readers to say, hey, I wanna, I've heard of this brewery, I wanna go, I heard about this new one called Away Days Brewing, what's this about? Right. And if they go to Oregon Live Beer Index page or, or blog, and it's not there, we're not helpful. And so I wanted to have a fully comprehensive database for readers to say, what is this place about? And tell me tell me what, where I should go. Now it's, it's all there. And you visited uh, 48 breweries in uh, 2019. Describe the parameters, right? Because there's some uh, breweries that people know and, and love that um, might not be there. But kind of walk us through your decision making there. So what there's one thing common to every brewery I visited, which is that its headquarters is in Portland. It's based here. So you're not going to have your Deschutes, which is based in Bend and has a satellite tap room and restaurant here. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have Backwoods or Vagabond or uh, um, Modern Times, which is from California. You Ten know, Barrel. Ten Barrel. These are all great breweries, but they're not Portland breweries. They may have a brewery in Portland, but they're not Portland breweries. I'm also not, I also didn't do the ones who have multiple outlets. So the McMenamins, the Breaksides. I mean, I did them, but I did one location. I didn't go to all of their breweries uh, just simply because it would be, it felt redundant and it would also be impossible time-wise. That's excellent editing right there. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Red line, red line, red line. So that's kind of the, the, um, how this came to be. Yeah. And so Portland itself has somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 breweries, but we hit 48 because those are the the ones that are based here mm-hmm. and one of each. Um, 48 is, is a solid sample size, I'd say. It, 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 is, it was, that was a solid bite. So Andre, you've lived in uh, the Portland metro area for how long? I moved up here. I moved to Northeast Portland in 1998. Yeah. So uh, you've seen a lot of breweries come and go. Um, I, I mean, before you started visiting, how many? Do you have any ballpark of how many of the breweries you you actually visited before you went to the 48? I would guess I had never been to a third of them. Okay. Um, for a couple of reasons. One, some were just nowhere in my 
area, you know, um, take for example, binary brewing, which is also uptown beer market out in outer Southwest. Okay. You know, I'd never been down there. There's also a bunch of new ones. I'd never been to threshold or, uh, assembly or away days because they're all brand new. They just opened up this year. Yeah. Um, and there were a couple other that I knew about that were a little bit smaller that I just never hit. So I'd say probably somewhere in the neighborhood of two thirds I'd been to. What are you looking for when you're determining what makes a great brewery? Um, I guess what makes a great brewery in your mind? Great beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, across a, across a spectrum of, uh, of varietals. Yes. Uh, varietals is wine, but I guess style is the word I'm looking for. Right. You know, it's, uh, it was a little bit tough to kind of figure out what are we looking to do here. Uh, when we came up with our brewery of the year list in January, we're also going to have our best breweries rank list. Um, there's also the brew pub experience. You know, there's many things that go into a great brewery or brew pub, but they're, they're very different elements. And so with brewery of the year, we picked a place that just sort of had its lightning in a bottle this year. Mm-hmm. Not to say that it won't have it going forward, but it just came into its own. It was probably the best story of the year. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the best brewery. That will be coming out, out later in January when we do our rankings. But it's the one that was the one that I felt like was the most capturing of attention this year. And making great beers, having a great ambiance, um, making beers across styles where if you go there and you like IPAs, you're going to get a great IPA. If you like hazies, you're going to get a great hazy. Farmhouses, sours, some other basic pub styles. This brewery uh, can do everything incredibly well. And so they're one of the top handful in the city, but I think they're also the one that came of age and had their best their best year this year. All right, we're going to tease that. We're going to get to your list in in a little bit. But um, I wanted to kind of, uh, I had this same discussion with Michael Russell, our food critic, which is basically how how the hell do you do this physically? Yeah. Um, How how did you go about doing this um, uh, where, you know, you're visiting multiple breweries a week. um, You're trying to taste a a variety of of, uh, beers. Can you give our listeners a picture of like how you approach that? Absolutely. Probably best place to start with that is the perspective of my wife (laughs) (laughs) who said you're going to do what and i said you know you've always got to think about your health um and as a professional beer taster i need to keep working out i need to watch my nutrition and i also can't drink too much and in a job like this that's an easy thing to be able to do so what i did was i would say i'm going to these breweries i'm doing a tasting of four or five beers Mm -hmm. probably two ounces each um and that that was my approach of you know do i think a full pint helps you understand a beer better sure but realistically that's not good right Right. i'm not going to sit at each place and have four pints no that's a recipe for a uh, a headache to say the least yeah and finding myself going to meetings Mm -hmm. so i would do a taster flight two ounces, maybe three of each beer, four or five beers, generally once a week, sometimes twice a week. And, you know, I mean, I can't do this job without being a beer lover. So, you know, I might have a beer at home, a couple beers at home, a couple times a week. I feel like that's sort of, that's my, uh, what do you, my boundaries, I guess is what you'd call it. So it amounts to what listeners might know as like an imperial pint or something, uh, you know, or spaced out over a long period of time while you're visiting this yeah. place and getting to know the, the owners and kind of their story. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can see on my Facebook lives, the tastings are all right there, right? right? Like we're sipping a few beers over the course of 45 minutes. And I didn't feel like it was undoable. And uh, I think ultimately my wife was happy about my approach. Well, and you're a busy guy with a family and uh, multiple jobs. And, and so it, it's right. a, an important and a runner too. So it's right. good to keep, keep that balance. Um, what I really loved as a reader, um, and a colleague, but mostly as a reader of your stories is these are really small business profiles, um, for the most part. I mean, obviously some of these, uh, breweries are big boys and they're, uh, you know, operated on a larger scale. But, um, a lot of these stories are just, you know, people getting into a business or following a passion. Um, 
Are there stories that will stick with you? Can you give some examples of uh, brewers you met along the way? Sure. You know, when I started this, I thought, you know, you can go online and find four or five graphs about most breweries. You know, it's they do pub styles, they do sours, they do whatever. Mm -hmm. Here's where the tap room is, is what it looks like. But what I didn't see anywhere, well, I shouldn't say anywhere. There are these stories, but comprehensively to be able to say this uh, this is how this brewery started. Here's the backstory behind it. That's what I found the most compelling. The guys and, and the women who worked there, how it got started, what their story was. And those are the stories I really wanted to tell. Also including what the, what their beer is about, what their food's about, what their tap room is about, just to be comprehensive about it. And so I found those the r- really most compelling part of the stories, you know, from um, Assembly out in Southeast. On Foster, right? Yep, on Foster. Those guys just kind of had a dream, and they started Detroit-style pizza mm-hmm. and, you know, bringing it all together. Young guys like that doing it. Old Town up in North Portland on MLK. This uh, is a Adam Milne, right? Yep, yeah. Adam, who had such a hard time with the city um, just in terms of the logo, right. the Old Town's logo. The White Stag building, uh, the, the famous sign. That's exactly right. Yeah. And uh, just seeing him battle all that and, and overcome that and trying to keep his brewery going forward. And they make some incredible beers there. It's easy in this city to fall into a rut because you have your favorites and there's so many good ones that you can just stick to your favorites. But this is one that I w- wouldn't have picked up off the shelf without reading your story and uh, – you know, talking to you about how good it was. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, Culmination comes to mind. It's one of my favorite breweries. Um, Tomas Slider does an amazing job across the spectrum there, and it's one of the coolest little tap rooms you'll find. And, of course, Upright Brewing, which, as you know, is one of my favorites. Uh, Just dropping down into the basement there and tasting some beers that are absolutely world-class. And then go watch the Blazers. Uh, Maybe not this year, but in previous seasons have a... (laughs) Have a good show. Right. You know, and just meeting all the brewers and founders, you know, Alex Ganum at Upright is just seems like a great guy and had a great talk with him. And it's just been really a a privilege to be able to do all this. So beyond the excellent uh, profiles, which are, you know, the motivations that get people into this business, all that, um, you know, their challenges that they face. You also are visiting all these unique buildings um, from uh, out in, in Gresham to, you know, down in Southwest, as you mentioned, Slabtown. I mean, what architecturally stood out to you? Because you're seeing a lot of spaces that, uh, like you said, you hadn't visited. And a lot of the uh, old guard are reinvesting and making, you know, their places uh, even flashier, I guess. Yeah. You mentioned Gresham, you know, and most people have been to Migration on uh, Gleason, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's classic Northwest Brew pub, great patio, cool inside, old uh, auto mechanic bay. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. something I like, can't remember anymore. I'd have to look at my story. But uh, so I went out to their new place in Gresham, and it's in an industrial building so right off the freeway. So I'm getting off, and I'm like, oh, this looks like a place I used to work when I used to fix machinery. Mm-hmm. And I walked in the front door, and like eye popping and jaw dropping. Jaw dropping, jaw dropping. <laughs> hey, that's a, a jaw dropping uh, IRA. Yeah, right. It's just stunning. Like it's like wow, these guys did an amazing job with this place. So you've got those kind of grand places. Grixon comes to mind. Their tap room is just beautiful. They've got all these custom ironworks that they've uh, had made in there. This is on Inner Southeast Division. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Right. So a place that I hadn't been, but want to go after reading your story. Yeah. Um, just a beautiful tap room. Um, you've got really cool little places like Away Days. I mentioned them earlier. Super bright, super light, small, but sun dappled on a sunny day. Yeah, you know, then you've got your kind of old classic places like Lucky Lab, you know, where you walk in and it's just so comfortable. You've got the big ceilings, the big sort of beer hall feel that you could just, and the patio out back. Some days you just need a super dog. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. You visited, uh, it's a lot of buildings. It's a, And it's, a, it, I mean, I guess it, it doesn't jump out that people are pumping a lot of money into these things. Uh, it, there's it depends there are some where people are pumping a lot of money into things and i'm like wow you you have uh you have more courage than i would have Mm -hmm. in this environment but i'm also not a businessman you know i'm just a guy looking (laughs) and uh who's always been pretty tight with his money and not really a risk taker 
So, I mean, I respect those guys and, and I appreciate what they're doing. I'm glad they're doing it because they're creating some amazing places. But yeah, there are some spaces that are just kind of, uh, kind of mind boggling. Before we get into the list of, of, uh, the breweries, um, let's talk about some of your favorite beers that you had this year. Cause, um, when you're sampling four or five, uh, different tastes at a variety of places, uh, <laughs> multiplied by 48, I guess there's going to be some, uh, delicious beer I'd imagine. And do you have any, if you could name just a couple off the top of your head or that you have at your fingertips that jump out to you as some of the best beers you had this year? Absolutely. What spring to mind? The first few that spring to mind are the Funeral Bach at Wayfinder. Just an amazing, it's a, uh, amazing German style Bach beer. It was roasty and uh, really well balanced. Um, at Von Ebert Brewing, their uh, Volatile Substance IPA was just an incredible IPA. Super balanced, kind of some tropical notes, some pine, some resin. There was a uh, beer at um, Threshold Brewing, which is one of the new breweries, called Roma, and it's a stout. It was probably the best stout I had all year at a brand new brewery. Those guys did a great job with that. And at Breakside, I had a beer called Quiescence earlier in the year. It was a sour, just amazing. All right, well, let's take a break and then we'll jump into your uh, top 10 list uh, from, from uh, again, these aren't necessarily the top 10 breweries, but the top 10 this year, yeah. according to Andre Minier. And I, sh- I should also say that Michael Russell, our food critic, went on some of these with me and and so it's not just me out there slinging ideas he and i are putting our heads together and tasting things and kind of come up coming up with some ideas sounds great we'll take a break and then get to the list well i'm sure we could talk all day about your top 10 but let's start um Maybe with a lightning round, talking through uh, in reverse order, uh, number 10 on your list. This is a, a, a brewery that was started by a, a legend in Oregon beer circles. Can you talk about number 10? Yeah, it's John Harris's Ecliptic Brewing, and it's in North Portland. It's an incredible space. Uh, its theme is astronomy, astrology. I'm not a space expert, but it's <laughs> one of those two. The stars above. The stars above and, and constellations and things like that. And their their food at Ecliptic is incredible. Like their burger is one of my favorite burgers I've ever had in my life. Their beers are top notch, um, you know, from their Karina Sour uh, to the Capella Porter. Um, just some really... Great stuff. John Harris is a legend in this town, as you said. Um, he created the recipes for um, Deschutes Mirapon, Deschutes uh, Black Butte Porter. And then he was at Full Sail, too, right? And then he was at Full Sail as well. Yeah. He's, um, he's doing okay. Yeah. And he's just a great guy. He's super fun. All right. Number nine, uh, Cascade. What can you tell folks about Cascade? Cascade doesn't get a whole lot of publicity anymore. Uh, maybe that's the wrong word, but they don't get a whole lot of buzz anymore because they've been around for a while doing what they do. And I think Portlanders take Cascade for granted a bit. I mean, they make some of the most world-class fruit, fruited sours you will ever taste. Yeah, people come to town specifically to go there. Absolutely. Um, you know, the Manhattan Northwest, uh, which is a, a sour based on the Manhattan cocktail, is the highest my highest rated beer ever on untapped it's a 475 i've never given a perfect five score and it's my only 475 i I mean it's just to me the near perfect beer and across the board they make incredible beers and and i i think it would be a mistake to not have cascade in the top 10. number eight a great notion this is a kind of a been a skyrocketing star in recent years uh you know great notion does some things incredibly well and they just completely shook up the portland beer world a few years ago when they introduced new england ipas to portland and uh kind of shook up the portland beer intelligentsia and some of the portland arrogance because here are these amazing um sweet yeasty fruity ipas that nobody had had before and suddenly everybody wanted them and they built that train and started that train and they've been riding that train in addition to their culinary inspired beers Mm -hmm. things like um double stack which is a maple syrup uh chocolate i don't know what all is in there lactose beer i'm hungry and thirsty at the same time yeah exactly i mean a lot of people turn their nose up to those kind of beers and i get that but 
at the same time, they're absolutely delicious. Uh, number seven on your list is a small brewery with a cool name. Little Beast. Charles Porter is the one of the founders of Logston Farmhouse Hales. And uh, he left there a bit ago, and he started Little Beast. And um, they do roughly the same thing, farmhouse-based beers that are sort of, but at Little Beast, a little bit more northwest. So you'll get more hops, uh, you'll get more bitterness, and then you'll get more uh, a more wide array of styles. Um, you know, they're very they're very experimental, um, but their beers are really on point. Uh, number six is another place you recommended that I hadn't been to. Um, can you talk about number six? Yeah. Tomas Slider started Culmination, uh, what do I want to say, 2014 maybe? Uh, I'm kind of guessing here again. But uh, it's an incredible place in northeast Portland. Small tap room. Uh, they do a little bit of food, but their beers across the board are world class. Um, their Phaedrus IPA is one of my favorite IPAs around. Um, their True Bell Saison is near perfect um, and everything in between. They do a lot of styles. They do it all very, very well. Number five is, uh, you know, I think a lot of people's favorite brewery, if I had to guess. Maybe that's just me and the nachos talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, who doesn't like Breakside's nachos? Exactly. Uh, you know, putting Breakside 5 here is a little bit confusing because I think they're easily at least one of the top two or three breweries in town. But the four above them, I think, have had just years that are, are, have been not necessarily newsworthy, but their beers have done some really great things. But that said, Breakside is a legend. It sets the bar in this town. They won three awards at the Great American Beer Festival this year. They enter a lot, but they won a lot. And they kind of bounced back from not winning last year. You go to their tap room in Milwaukee and look at their wall of ribbons. It's mm. it's impressive. And this is like the Oscars of the beer industry. Yeah. Is that a way to put it? At I don't the know. Great American Beer Festival. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It's the most prestigious competition in the nation. It's the one everybody wants to win at. And was it this year that they opened this the Slab Town, or was that last year? It was last year. Okay. Yeah. But, you know. So if I were going to do, if I had done a brewery of the year last year, yeah, they might have won. Yeah. Ben Edmonds is a brewer that who is unrivaled in this town. You know, he's uh, he. I, I have more respect for him than anybody, both in terms of what he does at Breakside and who he is as a person. He's an incredibly intelligent man, and um, he and Scott Lawrence uh, run a great brewery. And let's get to the the top four here. Um, number four is Von Ebert, which uh, not everybody might know. It followed from Fatheads, which mm -hmm. was in the Pearl District. Uh, they came in from the Midwest a few years ago, opened up Fatheads. Um, people kind of raised their eyebrows, like, "Who is this brewery from?" We're, back we're a east? provincial place sometimes. Aren't we, we are a provincial place, um, but Fatheads came in. And their brewer, Mike Hunsaker, uh, won, it was at GABF, he won a gold. And uh, their, their beers were incredible. And he ended up going up and opening his own place up in Camas, Grains of Wrath. And Tom Cook took over. Uh, he had been at Fatheads, and he op decided to open his new place. It's Von Ebert. It's named after his great-grandmother. Grandma Von Ebert was apparently quite the motivation and inspiration in the family. And so he named a place after that, and the quality rises to her standards. I mean, that Volatile Substance IPA I mentioned earlier is an incredible beer, and they opened up a new place out in Glendevere at the at the Portland Glendevere Golf Course. At the course. golf course, yeah. And out there they make farmhouses. Um, they do barrel-aged stuff, mixed fermentation, and um, it's just, uh, if you haven't been there, go there. Their food is great, and their beer is even better. This is, uh, we talked about architecture earlier. This is, or just spaces. This is in the Pearl, and this is one of those places that you walk in, you're like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's a jaw-dropping place. It's really, really beautiful. Yeah. And the an, beer is great. Yeah, it's actually in an old piano um, sales room. Okay, I yeah. know that. Yeah, I don't well, remember what the name of the place was, but it was a piano warehouse. Well, they have no treble making great beer. <laughs> Let's go to number three on your list. Uh, this is another music reference um, and uh, a legendary place already here that just celebrated its 10th anniversary. Is that right this year? Yeah, they had their 10th anniversary. It's Upright Brewing. It's Alex Ganoom. And uh, 
he opened it up. He just wanted to start a small place. And so he found a place in the basement of the Left Bank Building, which is right at the east end of the Broadway Bridge. And uh, he started brewing farmhouses sort of with a northwest twist down there. And uh, it just happens that he really knows how to brew. And uh, he makes beers that are unfailingly incredible. You know, I, I love going down into that space because it makes me feel like I'm in some sort of European... Um, it's great. You're sitting around barrels and you're, you know, you're, you're surrounded by the brewery. Exactly. Uh, you feel like you're in some small little village in Europe and, uh, it's just a, it's just a brilliant, cozy, quaint little spot and to sip on beers that are just ridiculous. And the music reference I made, cause it's, it's named after the upright bass. Is that right? It's named after the upright bass. Charles Mingus was mm-hmm. a jazz musician that, uh, Ganoom really admired and uh, admires and, uh, his main instrument was the upright bass. Okay. Well, it's. Uh, I, I don't think anyone would ever quibble with upright being mentioned on a top 10 breweries list in Portland. No, no. And, and there may be a little uh, sort of personal bias here just because it's always been one of my favorite breweries. And so I've, I've got it pretty high. Number two um, is another place that opened in recent years that uh, is a favorite of the Beat Check podcast host here. Um, <laughs> can you talk about number two? Wayfinder Beer opened up in the close-in east side, the industrial east side there by the Burnside Bridgehead. It's close to Produce Row, another uh, famous Portland spot down there. Yep, absolutely. And uh, Charlie Devereaux, who founded Double Mountain Brewing in Hood River, and Rodney Muirhead, who started Podna's Pit, and Matt Jacobson, who founded Sizzle Pie Pizza. Three of them got together opened a place that is uh, lager focused. They make German style beers and they make them to perfection. Um, You know, it's uh, beyond the beer. They've got this incredible outdoor patio space or is it a patio or what is it? It's a deck. I'll call it a, it's a patio deck. I mean, it's, it's gorgeous. It's huge. It's uh, you know, I've got the fire pits out there or yeah. the fire whatever tables and yeah it's it's beautiful yeah and the space uh has a feel of an old german you know beer pub i think that's what i like about it actually i hadn't thought about that connection i mean my first real experiences with delicious beer was delicious uh like bavarian hefts and uh if you go to wayfinder it's one of the few places i think that you can actually have a hefeweizen that tastes like a German hefeweizen. Absolutely. They got their brewer, his name's Kevin Davey, and he came from Chuckanut, which is renowned in the Northwest. Up in the, Bellingham. Yep, for their lagers. And he had been brewing there. They got him down here, and he's just doing some incredible stuff. They're doing a method of brewing called decoction brewing on some of their beers, which uh, is kind of complicated to explain, but they take some of the wart out do something with it, change temperatures. (laughs) I don't know. I watched them do it. We made a little video about it. Um, And it's hard to explain, but what it does is creates this incredibly clean, crisp flavor, even in an IPA, in their relapse IPA that's decocted. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of unlike any other IPA you'd ever know. What about number one? Uh, This is a brewery that I confess I have not been to that I'm very excited to try. Um, What is the number one brewery on your list this year? My brewery of the year for 2019 is Ruse Brewing. It's in Southeast Portland. It's in the old Fireman's uh, Fireman's Collective Building, I believe is what it's called. It's right by the Brooklyn Rail Yards. And there, Sean Kalis and Devin Benware have created really a, a beautiful gem of a space and make incredible beer there. They started out making farmhouses and hazy IPAs along with West Coast IPAs. Those were the sort of three-pronged focus. As of late, they've gone more into, uh, they're doing a lot more West Coast IPAs. They also have an incredible barrel aging program, um, which is in- amazing for a brewery that's so young. But exactly, they, yeah. They, yeah, they both started at, Col- well, they didn't start at Col- Culmination. They started at Old Market Pub, went, followed Tom- Tomas Slider, to culmination, work there with him. And they started Ruse there, and Slider let them use his equipment at culmination to get Ruse started. Okay. So they brewed Ruse beers while they built their tap room and then moved to Ruse two summers ago and opened up the tap room there. Wow. 
it's only been two summers and they're they're already on the on the top of your list yeah it, it is kind of amazing in 2018 their first year papyrus iris won the hazy ipa category in the oregon beer awards last year Ruse was named Oregon's Best New Brewery and Small Brewery of the Year as well at the Oregon Beer Awards in just this past spring. So they've come on and made a huge splash early. Um, their first year, you know, it takes a while to get things kind of up and going. This year, I feel like they've really hit their stride. I went in there, I've been in there three times um, this past year just to taste things, mm-hmm. see what's going on. Never a miss. Um, you know, every beer I've had there is kind of a wow beer, um, dialed in, whether it's their hazy, which is not going to punch in the face, like a glass of orange juice. They're subtle. I mean, they've got some big ones, but they're well balanced. Um, they're nuanced. Their, their West coast IPAs are just as good as anything I've tasted. They're blended beers, whether it's Saison based or some of their sour fruited, you just got to get in there and try them. And it's interesting that their story, uh, we talked about business profiles and where these people come from is in a lot of ways emblematic of, it touches on so many different phases of the Portland beer scene where you talk about old market pub, which is this institution on the West side. That is just a cool spot. Everyone should go to culmination, which is another one of our top 10 breweries in, in the city this year. That is just terrific. And then these guys spin it out on their own. That's pretty special. Yeah, absolutely. And along those lines, too, they were part of the three-way collaboration with Fort George this year, which kind of speaks to their excellence. Like, Fort George is not getting, you know, slackers to go in on their three-way annual three-way IPA with them. You know, this year they were uh, with Seattle's Cloudburst, uh, Ruse, and Fort George okay. to, yeah. to make their three-way, which is, as most people know, a, a huge event every year. Who's going to be in Fort George's release. Yeah. I, if you're listening to this podcast, I'm assuming you at least like beer and probably know about Fort George, which is a Astoria based uh, brewery. That's just uh, superb. Absolutely. So you chronicled these amazing rosters of breweries that we just went through, Andre, but this year you also reported on some of the titans of the craft beer industry going away. Can you talk about some of the breweries we lost this year and, and what's happening? Yeah, it's been a little rough, you know, um, Starting out earlier this year, uh, we lost Burnside Brewing, which had been a great story on Burnside. Um, You know, they had issues with their landlord. They had business issues. Um, They folded, and McKellar eventually opened up in that space. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that worked out okay. I mean, not to say that having Burnside go away was okay. It wasn't. Um, Bridgeport closed, you know, one of the long maybe the no the McMenamins was the first brewery in in Oregon and I believe Bridgeport was second I think they were ahead of Widmer um to see them close was just a huge bummer I mean I remember going to the the old Widmer pizza and beer hall Mm -hmm. in 98 before they sort of pearlized their their restaurant um and I you know it I think it remained popular, but I don't think it ever turned into what they thought that space was going to be. Gambrinus ended up buying them years ago and and, uh, was trying to run it from out of town. And I'm not sure that was always the the best approach. And Bridgeport sort of slowly receded into the memory and then Mm -hmm. finally closed. Portland Brewing closed their tap house, closed their restaurant. Widmer closed their restaurant. And then we had Lompoc going away. You know, that was, a, that was a tough pill to swallow. Lumpak was one of my early favorites. I used to go drink their beers on Northwest 23rd back in their old, the new old Lompoc uh, pub, which was a great place. Uh, hard to see them go. Who else was there? I think those are the biggies. And, and you know, you reported on this earlier, the, the why, but uh, I guess there's no one reason, right? But um, can you briefly describe maybe uh, the market pressures that – I mean, when you have so many breweries in one small town, I mean, it's a big, it's a big city, but it's not, you know, New York city. Absolutely. Um, I mean, why is this happening? Well, before I get into that, rock bottom was another one that closed. I'd forgotten about rock bottom. I wrote a story in June or July, sometime in early summer that had the headline. There's just too much beer out there. And that was a quote from the former uh, founder of Burnside Brewing. That's what it kind of speaks to. There's so much competition out there now. There's 
so much uh, so much beer out there. There's 70 breweries in Portland when you count all the duplicates and out-of-town breweries. There's 120, 120, 130 in the Portland metro area. That's a lot of beer, you know. And if you're not on top of your game, you're going to struggle because people won't suffer inferior beer unless you're the only place in a particular neighborhood. Yeah, and not around these parts. Right. You add into that the distribution difficulties that have evolved, you know, there are only, there's only so much space on grocery store shelves. And you take somebody like a Bridgeport Brewing, that distribution was a huge part of their model. But once all this competition came along, people just weren't buying that much Bridgeport Brewing anymore. And they had a huge infrastructure. They had a lot of, um, a lot of money sunk into what they did. Mm-hmm. There's just no way out of that. And breweries that got too big and got out over their skis, they found themselves in trouble. Um, a place like Lompoc, I think it's more just a case of kind of an old school place that maybe didn't keep up as much with yeah. the new, you know, you got the shiny new things coming along like Great Notion or Little Beast or, or whatever. Even I mean, even Ecliptic's been around a few years, but the Von Eberts, the Wayfinders, it's hard to keep up with that. And if you're, you know, you're you're not kind of as flashy as you once were, you're probably going to struggle. What um, What's on tap for you next? How do you follow up on this? I'm going to sleep for a while. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. earned. And uh, next year we are uh, we're doing a collaboration, for starters, with Labruatory. Nick Herrera over there invited us to come and make a beer with him. And so we're talking about doing that. I think that's going to happen. That will be really fun. That's cool. This yeah. is a North Portland brewery. Yep, laboratory. Um, they train people how to use brewing equipment. They train brewers. Um, they're owned by Portland Kettle Works. Thad Fisco owns them. And uh, wherever they send their equipment out, they have brewers come in and teach them how to do it. And so Nick is very skilled at teaching people how to brew and explaining the whole process. So we're going to go learn how to brew a beer and make a video and write a little story about it. Have you brewed beer before? I haven't. I haven't. I feel like it's kind of a uh, an, a hole in my resume. Yeah. Well, this is cool. What's the style? Do you know? Well, I feel like if we're going to get people's attention, we got to make an IPA, right? Yeah. Like I can't go out there and make a beer <laughs> to guard and have people be like, wow, this is great. <laughs> so give the people what they want. Yeah. Give them a fastball. That's right. Well, Andre, thanks so much for uh, taking the time and for your amazing series. It was really cool to see. Appreciate it, Andrew, and thanks for having me on. It was, uh, it was, a, it was very fortunate to be able to do it, and uh, I hope people found value in it. Thanks for listening to Beat Check with the Oregonian. Check out Andre's beer rankings, videos, and stories at oregonlive.com slash beer, or follow him on Instagram at Oregonian Beer Guy. Check out my stories on the transportation beat at oregonlive.com slash commuting, or follow me on Twitter at Andrew Thien. You can subscribe to Beat Check anywhere you get your podcasts to hear the latest episodes. If you like the show, please leave us a rating and review to help us spread the word. Until next time.